Hi guys, Delta Dart here with the next installment of my Pilot Academy series. In this episode, we'll be going over basic flight controls with a mouse and keyboard. Due to the sheer variety of joystick setups available and the variety of bindings for each, I won't be going over those, except for maybe my configuration of the X55 HOTAS and CH Pro pedals. If I do go over that, it will be in a much later video. Just like in the HUD overview episode, we'll be in the Mustang Delta on broken mood in solo free flight mode. As a note, before attempting to fly, I advise you turn on your comms tab. To do this, press left control and caps lock until all of your IFCS safeties, which we discussed in the HUD overview episode, are highlighted brightly. The first controls we'll be going over are the three most basic flight inputs, pitch, roll, and yaw. To explain what each one does, picture a joystick. If you put your right hand on the joystick and stick out your index finger, that will represent your nose. If you push the stick to the left or right, that's your roll. Your ship will turn upside down to the left or right depending on the direction you push the stick, but your finger is still pointing in the same direction. In the game, the ship won't stop rolling until you release the roll command, which for mouse and keyboard users is A for roll left and D for roll right. If you pull back or push forward on the stick, that is your pitch. If you push forward, your index finger points down. If you pull back, your index finger points up. When you make those inputs, the ship will now point in the direction of your index finger. With mouse and keyboard, your pitch is inverted by default, meaning that pushing your mouse forward points the nose up, while pulling your mouse back points the nose down. If you twist the stick, your finger points to the left or right. This is your yaw. To yaw with mouse and keyboard, move your mouse left or right. This will turn your ship as in the example with the joystick. Now that we've gone over directional control, it's time to get the ship moving. To add throttle to move the ship forward, press W. To reduce throttle and slow it down, press S. If you want to quickly go to 100% throttle, quickly press W twice. To bring the throttle back to zero, quickly press S twice. In addition to throttle to adjust your ship's speed, you also have boost, afterburner, and space brake which is also known as the Newtonian break. To activate your boost, press the shift key on the left side of your keyboard. Don't use the shift key on the right side of the keyboard, as it's not bound to your boost. Boost has a couple of different functions. The first is to make your ship accelerate more quickly. Once you have reached your ship's top speed, the boost will no longer function. In addition to faster acceleration, boost will help tighten your turns and straighten the ship out faster than without. As an alternative to boost, you can use your afterburner. To activate your afterburner, quickly tap your left shift twice and hold on the second tap for the time that you choose to use your afterburner. Just like boost, afterburner will accelerate your ship more quickly, tighten your turns, and straighten out your ship faster than without boost or afterburner. The main difference here is that afterburner pushes your ship to a higher speed than it would normally go. Keep an eye on your boost gauge when using your booster afterburner, as boost fuel is consumed when using these features. Some ships, such as the Hornet or 300 series, regenerate boost fuel slowly. Some ships, such as the Mustang Gamma and Mustang Omega, regenerate boost fuel quickly, while others, such as the P-52 Merlin, don't regenerate boost fuel at all. The Space Brake is an aid that will slow your ship down or help your ship recover from a spin. In its current iteration, it's not very strong, but it does work. To activate your Space Brake, press and hold the space bar as long as you wish to keep the Space Brake active. To practice these controls, take your ship into a solo free flight. You access solo free flight by going into Arena Commander. How you do this depends on where you are. If you have just loaded to the main menu, you can click on Electronic Access, then click on Arena Commander. If you're in the hangar, you have two ways of accessing it. The easiest is to press the Escape key, click on Electronic Access, then click on Arena Commander. The more immersive way of accessing it is to look for a white pod in your hangar, pressing F when the Use prompt appears, then clicking on Arena Commander. Once you have reached the Arena Commander menu, click on Drone Sim. On the left side of your screen, you should see an image that says Free Flight. If that image does not say Free Flight, click on the left or right arrows until it does. On the right, there will be an image that will either say Broken Moon or Dying Star. These are your available maps. You can select either of them by clicking the left or right arrow until you get to the one you want to fly on. Below the map is your ship selection. If you only have one ship, you won't need to change this. 
If you have more than one ship, you can click on the ship selection bar and scroll down until you find the ship you want to fly and click on it to select it. Then click apply to close the window. Once you've done that, you can click launch in the lower right hand corner of your screen. Once you've loaded in and you have control over your ship, I recommend pressing left control and caps lock until you have both G safe and comstab highlighted. Then press the controls a few times each in different orders to get used to where they are and what they do. After you have a basic familiarization with the controls, point your ship in the direction of an asteroid or debris field. Fly to it and try to navigate through it without hitting any asteroids. Do this slowly at first, then pick up speed as you gain confidence. You will likely crash into a few until you get used to how the controls work together and how your ship handles. As a side note before continuing, the footage I have included here is not representative of actual in-game racing. This footage has only been included to demonstrate the designated course and how to navigate it. In an actual race, the ships will be cutting corners and using their afterburners throughout, often reaching speeds more than double the speed that I'm flying the Delta at during this lap. Once you've gotten the hang of flying through the asteroids, change the game mode in Drone Sim to Murray Cup Racing and select Old Vanderval as the track. Follow the arrows, billboards, and gates to the finish line. Do this until you can make clean laps at a reasonable speed. Bear in mind that ships not designed for racing will drift pretty badly. Use your boost appropriately to control your drift and use it sparingly to keep from running out too fast. Once you can navigate the track well, go back out into a free flight and see the difference it's made in your control of the ship through the asteroid and debris fields. Hi hey guys, Delta Dart here. If you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. If you're looking for something else to watch while you're waiting on my next video, check out these videos right here and they'll keep you tied over. Until then, keep your guns on target and I'll see you next time.